He amalgamated a fractured society with different political aspirations into a nation. After seeing his dreams fulfilled for a single Libyan state, he was deposed. In today's African History 101, we'll look into the life of King Idris, the first and the last king of Libya. Libya was part of the Ottoman Empire since 1551. In 1800s, the Ottoman Empire was declining. The Ottoman Empire's military weakness was becoming more apparent. European powers saw this weakness and decided to expand their territories. One of the first land that was taken was Algeria by France in 1830. Slowly, the Ottoman Empire was losing control of their land. The Ottoman Empire was also weakened in Libya where it controlled Tripotania, Serenica, and the Faiza regions. The Ottoman Empire joined World War I to the side of Germany. The war continued weakening its military. Sensing an opportunity, Italy invaded Libya on the 4th October 1911 and was able to defeat the Ottoman Turks. Italy took over the province of Tripotania with its capital Tripoli and Salonika and its capital Benghazi. During this time, a large Muslim religious group called Senussi Order was trying to resist the Italian rule. The Senussi Religious Brotherhood was established in Serenica by Muhammad al bin al Senus. This organization would develop into a powerful political force. Muhammad Idris bin Muhammad al Mahdi was born on the 12th March 1889. Although some sources give the year as 1890, the son of Said Muhammad al Mahdi bin Said Muhammad al Senusi and his third wife Aisha. Idris was the grandson of Muhammad al bin Senussi, the founder of the Senussi Order. He became chief of the Senussi Order in 1916 following the abdication of his cousin Said Ahmad Sharif Senussi. He was recognized by the British under the new title, Emir of the Territory of Serenica, a position also confirmed by the Italians in 1920. He was installed Emir of Tripotania on the 28th of July 1922. Idris's family claimed descendants from Prophet Muhammad through his daughter Fadima. By the end of the 19th century, the Senus order had established a form of government in Saranika, unifying its tribes, controlling its trade routes, and collecting taxes. Said Ahmad Sharif of Senus had pursued armed attacks against British military forces stationed in neighboring Egypt. On taking powers, Idris put a stop to these attacks. Instead, he established an alliance with the British which would last for half a century. Using the British as intermediaries, Idris led the order into negotiation with the Italians in July 1916. This resulted in treaties that left most of the inland Saranica under the control of the Senus order. Relationship between the Senus order and the newly established Tripotania Republic were bitter. The Senus attempted to militarily extend their power into eastern Tripotania, resulting in pitch battle at Banwalid, in which the Senus were forced to withdraw back into Sarekanik. At the end of World War I, the Ottoman Empire signed an armistice agreement in which they ceded their claim over Libya to Italy. Italy, however, was facing serious economic, social, and political problems domestically and was not prepared to relaunch its military activities in Libya. It issued statutes known as the League Fundamentale with both the Tripotelian Republic in June 1919 and Saranica in October 1919. This brought about a compromise by which all Libyans were accorded the right to join Libya Italian citizenship, while each province was to have its own parliament and governing council. The Senussi were largely happy with this arrangement. In October 1920, further negotiation between Italy and Saranaica resulted in the Accord of Aujama in which Idris was given the title of Emir of Saranaika. As part of the accord, he was given a monthly stipend by the Italian government, who agreed to take responsibility for policing and administration of the areas under Senussi control. 
The accord also stipulated that Idris must fulfill the requirements of the League fundamentally by disbanding Saranaikan military units. However, he did not comply with this. By the end of 1921, the relationship between the Senesi order and the Italian government had again deteriorated. Following the death of Tripolitan leader Ramadan Aswaeli in August 1920, the Republic descended into civil war. Many tribal leaders in the region recognized that this discord was weakening the nation's chances of attaining full autonomy from Italy. And in November 1920, they made in Guyana to bring an end to the violence. In January 1922, they agreed to request that Idris extend the Senussi Emirate of Saranaika into Tripotania in order to bring stability. They presented a formal document with this request on 28 July 1922. Idris advisers were divided on whether he should accept the offer or not. Doing so would contravene the Aujama agreement and would damage relations with Italian government, who opposed the political unification of Saranaika and Tripotania as being against their interests. Nevertheless, in November 1922, Idris agreed to the proposal. <laughs> Following the agreement, Idris feared that Italy under its new fascist leader Benito Mussolini would militarily retaliate against the Senus order, and so he went into exile in Egypt in December 1922. Soon the Italian reconquest of Libya began, and by the end of 1922, the only effective anti-colonial resistance to the occupation was concentrated in Saranaika neighborhoods. After the outbreak of World War II, in 1939, Idris supported the United Kingdom, which was at war with Italy, in the hope of ridding his country of Italian occupation. Delegates from both the Saranaikans and Tripotanias agreed that Idris should conclude agreements with the British that they would gain independence in return for support during the war. Privately, Idris did not promote the idea of Libyan independence to the British instead suggested that it become a British protectorate. A Libyan Arab force consisting of five infantry battalions made up of volunteers was established to aid the British war effort. After the defeat of the Italian armies, Libya was left under the military control of British and French forces. They governed the area until 1949, according to the Hague Convention of 1907. Both the British and French did not want to grant independence to Libya. Rather, they wanted the French to control Tripotania and Saranaika should be under British rule. Their plans were published in May 1949. They generated violent demonstrations in Tripolitania and Saranaika and drew protests from the United States, Soviet Union, and other Arab states. In November 1949, the United Nations General Assembly adopted a resolution on Libyan independence, stipulating that it must come into being by January 1952. The resolution called for Libya to be a single state, led by Idris, who will be declared king of Libya. Both the United Kingdom and United States, who were committed to preventing any growth in Soviet influence in the southern Mediterranean, agreed to this for their own Cold War strategic reasons. On 24th December 1951, Idris announced the establishment of the United Kingdom of Libya. The newly established state faced serious problems. In 1951, Libya was one of the world's poorest countries. Much of its infrastructure had been destroyed by war. It had very little trade and high unemployment. Although the three provinces had been united, they shared little common aspiration. The kingdom was established along federal lines, something that the Saranaika and Fezan region had insisted upon, fearing that they would otherwise be dominated by Tripotania where two-thirds of the Libyan population lived. Obviously, the Tripolitanian had largely favored a unitary state, believing that it would allow the government to act more effectively in the national interest, and fearing that a federal system 
would result in further British and French domination of Libya. The three provinces had their own legislative authorities. This constitutional framework left Libya with a weak central government and strong provincial autonomy. Idris's regime soon banned political parties operating in the country, claiming that they intensified internal instability. From 1952 onwards, all candidates for re elections were government nominees. Under King Idris, Libya found itself within the Western sphere of influence. It became the recipient of Western expertise and aid. By the end of 1959, it had received over 100 million of aid from the United States, being the single biggest per capita recipient of American aid. U.S. companies would also play a leading role in the development of Libya oil industry. In return, Libya granted the United States and United Kingdom usage of the Huilas Air Base and the Audem Air Base. This alliance on Western nation placed Libya at odds with the growing Arab nationalist and Arab socialist sentiment across the Arab world. In July 1967, anti-Western riots broke out in Libya, particularly in Tripoli and Benghazi, to protest the West support of Israel against Arab states in the Six-Day War. Many of oil workers across Libya went on strike in solidarity with the Arab forces fighting Israel. In the 1950s, a number of foreign companies began prospecting for oil in Libya. By 1959, oil was discovered. Oil production provided a huge boost to the Libyan economy, whereas the per capita annual income in 1951 had been between 25 to 35 US dollars. By 1969, it was 2,000 US dollars. Although that was the case, the Libyan government faced rampant corruption and nepotism. In June 1960, Idris issued a public letter in which he condemned this corruption and claimed that bribery and nepotism would destroy the very existence of the state and its good reputation both at home and abroad. In April 1963, King Idris abolished the Libyan federal system, both the provincial legislative assemblies and the provincial judicial systems were abolished. Doing so allowed him to concentrate economic and administrative planning at the centralized national level. And henceforth, all taxes and oil revenue were directed straight to the central government. As part of this reform, the United Kingdom of Libya was renamed to Kingdom of Libya. These reforms were not popular among many Libyan provinces, which saw their power curtailed. King Idris used the oil money to strengthen family and tribal alliances that would support the monarchy, rather than use it to build up economic and political apparatus of the state. This reduced his support to honor Salonaika. On the 1st September 1969, while King Idris was in Turkey for medical treatment, he was deposed in a coup d'etat led by a group of Libyan officers under the leadership of Muammar Gaddafi. King Idris went into exile in Egypt. After the 1969 coup, King Idris was put on trial in absentia in the Libyan People's Court and sentenced to death in November 1971. In 1983, at the age of 94, King Idris died in a hospital in the district of Turkey in Cairo, Egypt. His successor, Muammar Gaddafi's policies with regard to the oil industry would also be technocratic and bore many similarities with those of King Idris. Although the king died in exile and most of the Libyans were born after his reign during the civil war, many demonstrators opposing Gaddafi carried portraits of King, especially in Saranaika. The tricolor flag used during the era of the monarch was frequently used as a symbol of revolution and was readopted by the National Transitional Council as the official flag of Libya after Gaddafi's fall. For more African stories, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell.